In this video, we're going to learn about the angle of attack indexer, what on speed means. We're going to look at various carry landings for different angles of attack, what the region of reverse command is, and how to practice for improving your own flying. The angle of attack indexer in the F-18 is on the left-hand side of the HUD, and it will light up with the gear extended while you're airborne. It indicates where your angle of attack is, in reference to an angle of attack for an optimal energy state, and this makes it useful when you're coming into land. This optimal angle is called on speed angle of attack, and it's always constant for your airplane regardless of the conditions. This table shows you how the indexer will indicate the angle of attack. And based on what the indexer shows, you're going to be adjusting your angle of attack and thrust to maintain the on speed condition for a nice stable approach to landing. The indexer works in tandem with an E bracket on the heads up display. This e-bracket indicates an acceptable range of on-speed angle of attack, with the center of it reflecting the ideal on-speed angle of attack of 8.1 degrees. Having the velocity vector centered in the e-bracket means you are holding an on-speed angle of attack, but reaching this AOA requires you to manually trim the pitch. So we'll look at how the FCS works in order to hold this angle of attack. The FCS trims for a reference value when the stick is pitch neutral. When the flaps are in auto and you're less than 22 degrees angle of attack, the reference for the FCS to hold is 1G, so it's going to be effectively trimming to maintain 1G flight. When the flaps are in auto and you're above 22 degrees angle of attack, the reference for the FCS is 22 degrees of angle of attack. This means the FCS is going to provide AOA feedback in terms of stick force as long as that AOA is above that 22 degrees. This will increase the stick force needed for higher angle of attack in G, so you're fighting against that trim. And once that 22 degrees AOA is reached, you go back to 1G as a reference. Now when you use flaps half or full with the gear extended for landing, you're going to trim the pitch manually to set an on-speed AOA as a reference which the FCS will hold for you. Now one extra bit regarding the indexer. So if you're going to be landing at an aircraft carrier, you're going to push your hook bypass in the carrier position. And so when we start configuring the airplane for landing, if you were to drop the landing gear in the flaps, the index will light up as we expect. However, because we haven't put the resting hook down, the index is actually going to flash at you. So if you ever see this flashing, this is going to be a reminder to extend the arrestor hook. So now I'll just start applying some nose up trim, get myself to the on speed angle of attack and let it settle. Now we can see we're at on speed and descending, and then we'll lower the hook. And once the hook is fully extended, the indexer will be constantly lit. So why is on-speed AOA important? While you can save airfield approaches without being on speed because the runway touchdown zone is so large compared to a carrier, being on speed during carrier approaches is critical because when you're on speed, the angle of the hook to the deck is going to be optimal to catch a wire. So without being on speed, the resting hook's hook to deck angle is going to be wrong, and this will affect how or even if you catch a wire on landing. So in this example, we're on speed and we're on glide paths coming into the carrier. So this way we're going to maintain that right angle of attack for the airplane and the hook as we touch down. If we're staying glide path and touch down the right spot, we should hit the third wire. So here an external view, holding that angle of attack as you come into land. You can see we've touched the carrier and got the third wire. So that's ideal when we come into land on the carrier. In this example we're coming in slow which means that the velocity vector is above the E-bracket. So we're at a too high of an angle of attack for this approach. And even if we were to stay on glide path and again in the touchdown zone, because of our high angle of attack, the hook will actually catch the wire before we touch down. So you can see we come in at a higher angle of attack than normal. This will create a much steeper hook to deck angle, so the hook is closer to the deck. And then the hook will catch the wire while the airplane is still airborne and travels a fair bit of distance before the mains touch. And this is a problem because it'll cause damage to the airplane in real life. So here we can see we're coming in fast. So we've got a red chevron and the E-bracket is above the velocity vector. From glide path coming in, but because of our shallower angle, the hook is further away from the deck than it should be. And this affects how you touch down as well. And in this example, the mains will actually touch down on the deck first. And the shallow angle of the hook was pretty lucky to catch the final wires we ended up flying past the touchdown zone because it was fast. And the other side effect, if you came in really fast, 
is that when you do touch down, because the hook is so shallow, it may hit the deck and then skip over the top of the wires, meaning you won't catch any at all, so you'll have to do a bolter to go around and then try another approach to land. So when you're flying by the indexer, you're going to be in a landing configuration at slow speed. This means you've got an increased amount of induced drag because you're generating a lot of lift. And this regime of flight is called the region of reverse command. And in this region of high induced drag, your power is going to be used to adjust your altitude and you're going to be pitching for airspeed. And this is different to normal flight because you're at higher speeds where power is going to adjust your airspeed and pitch will adjust your altitude. So in order to improve your flying, you can practice flying by the indexer in this region of reverse command by using a slow flight exercise. That's what we're going to have a look at now. So for this slow flight exercise, we're going to start out much faster. Um, this is because we want to reflect our practicing this as if we we're going to go to an airfield or a carrier as we go into a break. Uh, so just to make things a little bit easier to see, I'm going to cage the HUD. And we're going to start out at 10,000 feet. And we're going to do a level 180 degree break turn. This way it's like as if we're coming into approach on an airfield or a carrier. We're going to maintain this at a level turn. So throttle to idle, bring up the speed brake, roll into the turn and add our back pressure. We'll do our best to maintain 10,000 feet in this turn while slowing down. Once we'll you start passing through 250 knots, we're going to extend the landing gear and the flaps. Now as we slow down further, we're going to relax that angle of bank so we don't start losing too much altitude. We'll roll out 180 degrees off our initial heading, which is north. So we get our wings level. Start increasing that nose up trim as we begin slowing, so we get ourselves to be an on-speed angle attack while increasing the thrust and maintaining our altitude. So by the end of it, our stick should be centered and we'll be on speed. Now remember that the on-speed is not a fluctuating airspeed at all, it's actually that constant angle of attack. It doesn't matter how heavy you are, it doesn't matter what the bank angle is, it doesn't matter what the weather conditions are. Your on-speed angle of attack is always going to be the same in your particular airplane. So because I'm in this configuration, like I mentioned earlier, it's a high amount of induced drag. This means we're in the region of reverse command. So right now, my power is controlling my altitude. My pitch is going to adjust the airspeed, but I've trimmed to be at on-speed angle of attack. So I don't really need my hand on the stick at all, because the airplane is always going to be seeking this angle of attack, no matter what kind of changes I make to the airplane. As an aside, we can also see the indexes shown on the outside of the airplane. This will assist the other size in telling us how we're doing on our approach. So after the brake turn, the next step we do in this exercise is going to be a turn to the left of 90 degrees. And because we're going to make a turn, as we begin the roll, we're going to lose vertical lift. And we have to compensate by using power to increase our lift. And that way we won't lose altitude. So we're going to increase the thrust a little bit before we initiate the roll. Then we're going to begin our roll and get to 30 degrees of bank. And as we get established in the turn, we're going to be cross-checking our vertical speed, heading, making sure we're staying on speed, as well as our angle of bank. We we'll continue doing this through the turn. And we're making small adjustments in our thrust. That way we can adjust the vertical speed so we can maintain our altitude as needed. And then as we start approaching 270, we'll reduce the thrust and roll the airplane level. So if you end up fast, that's okay. Just remember that the airplane's gonna wanna return to be on speed. So as you slow down, you can relax the stick and you'll get back to that condition. So now we can begin a turn back to the right. So we'll increase the power, initiate the roll, get to our 30 degrees. We're going to roll out on a heading of 360, cross-checking with the heading, vertical speed, bank angle, and on speed. And we're adjusting the thrust as we move through the turn to maintain our altitude. Then as we approach north, we'll begin rolling the airplane level, reducing the power. So again, I'm ending up a little fast, so I'm going to use forward stick to hold the nose down until I start slowing. And the airplane's going to want to retain the on-speed condition, at which point the stick will be back at neutral. So the next step in this is going to be a descent of 500 feet. So when we want to descend, we can just reduce the power. And what's going to happen is because we're trimmed for on-speed, it's actually going to maintain that on the descent as well. So we start reducing the power, and we'll notice the nose will start dropping, and we'll maintain on speed in the descent. Now the actual descent rate that you want to attain is going to be up to you, and it's going to be determined by how much thrust you take out. 
So I'm trying to get about a thousand foot a minute or so. And this means that I'm going to initiate my level off within 10% of that or 100 feet. So once I reach 9,600, start increasing the power a little bit. Maybe raise the nose to help it along if you wanted to level it off. And we should be at 9,500 feet or so. And we're back to staying on speed and level flight. So now we'll initiate two turns, one to the right and one to the left at this lower altitude. So we'll increase the power a bit and then begin our roll to the right. Trying to get it to 30 degrees angle of banks, so I need to increase it a little bit more. Cross checking the vertical speed in the heading, adjusting the thrusters needed to maintain our 9500 feet. Cross checking the heading, vertical speed angle of attack and our bank angle. As we approach the easterly heading we're going to begin the power reduction and wings level. Trying to maintain the on-speed condition as best as we can. And then once you're ready you can then initiate the turn back to the left. So we're going to add the power, begin the roll left to 30 degrees. We'll lock it in there cross checking vertical speed, see if we can de-add ourselves ascending back to 9500 feet this time. As we start approaching the heading of north, take out the power, roll the airplane level, try to maintain your altitude, you can use the pitch to maintain that remember, and slowly relax it as you start getting back to being on speed. Let me get ready for the next step. I'm going to climb back up to 10,000 feet. So in this, we're going to add the power, give ourselves a good climb rate, try and get a thousand foot a minute like our descent previously. The nose is going to automatically come up on its own. We don't need to touch the pitch at all because the airplane is going to want to maintain that on-speed condition in the climb. So once you start getting that vertical speed you want, then we're going to take 10% of that and initiate the level off so a thousand foot a minute, I'm going to start my level off at 9,900 feet. I'm going to start reducing the power. The airplane's nose is going to fall. You can adjust the power as needed to try and catch it at about 10,000 feet. And obviously we're not going to be landing this aircraft right now. So we're going to recover from slow flight by retracting the gear and setting the flaps to auto. And we'll begin speeding up the aircraft and getting back into the region of normal command. So as the airplane speeds up, we're going to be using the pitch to maintain level flight, but the airplane's also going to automatically trim itself out. So the first step, we're going to bring the gear up, flaps to auto, start increasing our thrust. The airplane's going to start speeding up and want to climb. So you have to add a bit of forward pressure on the stick to hold yourself level, and you'll slowly begin reducing that as the airplane begins automatically trimming itself out as your airspeed begins increasing. So once your airspeed is at a stable number and it doesn't change anymore, You'll find yourself, you won't need to have any input on the stick at all in order to maintain altitude because of that automatic trimming function. I'll complete this video though on on speed for the Hornet, so I recommend uh, you try the slow flight exercise out. This way you get a better understanding of how this all comes together. Until next time, remember to fly safe and check six.